Okay. So where does sort of promoter sit in the uh, Pantheon of nurse systems here, um, right between uh, nurse gate and nurse tent? So nurse nine is uh, sort of, as uh, Richard mentioned, we've, we've sort of continued this, this transition of the applications and work uh, and, uh, you know, we're starting to support uh, new complex workflows on the system, which is a, a GPU, a mixed uh, CPU and a GPU system, right? And uh, we started deploying that in uh, in early 2021 uh, in parts, and then uh, we're we're getting very close to to rolling out uh, its its full capabilities. <clears throat> Um, sort of very, very high level, it, uh, this is what it looks like, right? So, so there are CPU only nodes, which are the AMD EPIC uh, series. Uh, there are GPU accelerated nodes with uh, NVIDIA uh, GPUs in them. Uh, we have an all flash file system. Uh, and uh, from a user environment point of view, we have uh, workflow nodes and high memory nodes uh, as well as uh, you know, standard sort of login nodes, uh, all of which are are hooked up to uh, uh, you know the slingshot, uh, which is an Ethernet compatible network. Right? Uh, in addition, the system pulls in other resources from NERSC, uh, external file systems, uh, high bandwidth connections to to archival storage, and of course uh, the other system that we have on the floor, uh, which is Cori. Right. <clears throat> So a little bit more detail uh, here, and you can see, uh, you know, some of the specifications of each one of these things that I just mentioned. Right, okay? um, and so uh, I'll talk a little bit about the the orchestration of how we set up the system. But uh, right now, this system is is our first system to where the system management portion of it is orchestrated using the sort of uh, uh, cloud uh, technology, sorry, what we call uh, Kubernetes here. Um, the login workflow nodes themselves are, are GPU enabled. And as I mentioned, we have some large memory nodes with uh, uh, one terabyte of memory per node. <clears throat> um, the other thing uh, that Perlmutter has is, uh, a, a, you know, all of the computes are uh, connected to the nurse network with a resilient high bandwidth uh, linkage here. And this little graphic here on the on the bottom left uh, shows you what that looks like, right? So uh, Perlmutter has a, a multi terabit per second connection to uh, its edge routers that also have a uh, multi uh, smaller, but a multi terabit connection to the nurse network itself, and then uh, onto uh, ESNet in the world, right? <clears throat> Uh, one thing to note is, you know, these, uh, so the system itself is divided up largely into essentially two parts, right? There's the whole management framework, which are these uh, gray colored uh, rectangles here. And there's the compute uh, frame, uh, nodes partition, if you will, that consists of the GPU and the CPU nodes. Uh, the compute nodes are all direct uh, liquid cooled, uh, water cooled in this case. Uh, and uh, the uh, the rest of the management framework is all air cooled Linux. Right? Mm -hmm. um, so, in terms of the hardware capabilities, like I mentioned, the GPU accelerated nodes, of which there's an example right here. You can look at the sort of complexity of all of the cooling and and the heat sinks and various other connections that are there on the node. Um, they have four uh, A100 uh, GPUs per node. Right, each of these. Uh, uh, GPUs uh, uh, has a 40 gigabytes of high bandwidth memory, so it gives you 160 gigabytes of memory, uh, high bandwidth memory on the node because they're all linked together with uh, NV what, uh, what's called the, the latest generation of um, NVIDIA's uh, linkage between the CPUs. In this case, as the picture here shows, um, called NVLink 3. <clears throat> uh, in addition to that, to help drive the node itself, they have a uh, AMD, uh, you know, Epic uh, 7763, also colloquially known as the Milan uh, chip. And so these nodes have, uh, all, in addition to the high bandwidth memory, they have 256 gigabytes of uh, DRAM per node, which you can see here, uh, which is also actually <laughs> liquid cooled. Um, and so, uh, and on top of that, because they have four GPUs per node, we've uh, provisioned them with um, four network cards per node. And in this case, these are the uh, 
uh, latest generation of HPEs, uh, what's called Slingshot 11, which are capable of 200 gigabits uh, per node, right? So, and this is where, where they're connected. The GPUs are, are hooked up um, with uh, PCIe uh, to the, uh, through the CPU. And then uh, those are also hooked up with uh, PCIe into the NICs and then go to the outside world. And then the GPUs are all hooked to each other. On the CPU nodes, which I don't unfortunately have a picture of, um, we have two sockets of Milan. Uh, uh, and uh, in this case, we have uh, 512 gigabytes of DRAM uh, because we have uh, a little bit more space when we don't have the GPUs in there. Um, and uh, they have one slingshot uh, card per node, right? So if you look at this node, you'd, you'd basically um, double the number of CPUs uh, and then uh, uh, remove all of the GPUs as well. So. <clears throat> Um, let's see here. So uh, the other thing, as I mentioned, was the, 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 the sort of overall system orchestration framework. And so here you have a, a picture of the, the sort of high level, what it looks like, right? So you've got all of the non-compute nodes and then you've got compute nodes. Typically what happens is you have some small number of non-compute nodes that uh, manage and boot all of the compute nodes and handle the storage and so on. In this particular case, like I said, we, we've, um, we're using um, a new, uh, relatively new to HPC at least, uh, orchestration framework called uh, Kubernetes, which is sort of a service-oriented architecture, right? And that allows us to put various services on here in a more or less resilient manner uh, that controls uh, all of the booting and uh, orchestration of other services on, on all of the non-compute nodes. And then the compute nodes are uh, are booted using this framework, but they don't actually are, they're not actually controlled using uh, Kubernetes, right? Uh, they just boot it. And so they uh, run uh, an enterprise Linux environment, which in this case is uh, SUSE Linux, which is uh, has been vendor modified with uh, certain you know drivers and, and things like that. Uh, it is bare metal booted. So we're not uh, controlling it using, you know, any, uh, the, the environment that you get on the compute nodes is not uh, virtualized in any way. Uh, but uh, we have additional uh, sort of vendor provided um, features in there, like the programming environment, uh, various other Cray Linux features and so on. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, in terms of differences from Cori, uh, you know, Richard pointed out, Cori's, uh, uh, you know, our uh, previous system, which is, uh, you know, coming to the end of its life. Uh, in, in terms of Cori, at a high, very high level, you know, both of these have a, a dragonfly topology. Obviously, the network itself, the, the, the underlying hard, uh, network hardware and uh, the protocols are different. Uh, one of the, the Cori has an Aries network, uh, whereas Slingshot has a, um, uh, well, whereas uh, Perlmutter has a Slingshot network. On Cori, though, uh, you can see here all of these uh, additional capabilities, such as login nodes and the, the you know, uh, the GPU nodes that we have uh, added to Cori as well as the storage nodes are, are sort of separate networks that overlap through uh, essentially gateways into uh, into the Aries network, right? And so you've got the KNLs and the, high, the Haswell nodes and so on, and as well as the service nodes, all of which are part of uh, the Aries network. On, uh, on Perlmutter though, everything is part of the one uh, slingshot network here that's sort of indicated by these two tiny, um, <clears throat> Uh, switches that we have there. And then we have the uh, 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 CPU only nodes as well as the GPU accelerated nodes in the management uh, network, right? So you can see here, this is a, a picture of the uh, Perlmutter's network. <laughs> and uh, you, you know, the different colorings here sort of show the different uh, groupings of the these, these nodes. So you have 24 of these compute group nodes and then you have um, really the, uh, 12 or 15, 12 of these uh, service uh, group nodes uh, of the IO nodes, and then you have uh, four of the service group nodes, right? So, <clears throat> um, in terms of software, we, we sort of have a, a really rich uh, programming uh, set of programming environments that we support, as well as, uh, you know, programming models and languages. Um, and uh, all of which are sort of put together by some community code that we um, uh, uh, that we support as well, right? <clears throat> and uh, I won't go into too much detail, I'm running out of time here, but, uh, you know, that's where we are. In terms of the science, this is sort of just a teaser for, I think, Richard uh, 
mentioned, our, our utilization has been very good. If you look at sort of the pie charts of usage of both the CPU nodes and the GPU nodes this year, you can see that the, the, the offices that Richard talked about in terms of who our, uh, our user base uh, comes from uh, is very widely distributed amongst the usage of, uh, of the machine right now, right? Both from the CPU side as well as the, the GPU side. And here are some sort of teasers for uh, the, the kinds of science that we've supported uh, in the last year, right? Um, ranging from um, standard sort of uh, simulations uh, to sort of newer models and data and learning, as well as uh, uh, cross facility uh, kind of workflows that we're supporting in the super facility, right? Um, from uh, uh, DESI to, to LCLS and, and others. <clears throat> Uh, for the future, uh, Perlmutter, we're really looking forward to um, uh, to getting it, uh, uh, you know, into people's hands uh, in its full capability. But uh, we're not standing still, right? So we're going to make a number of operational improvements, improvements to how you are able to access the system, as well as the kinds of things you'll see when you do get on the system, right? Uh, we we in part have continuous operations now, although we will have continue to have maintenances and updates to the system, and we're hoping to do most of those uh, non disruptively to to our users, right? Um, and uh, you know, not right now, but in the future, we're uh, very soon we're hoping uh, to be able to give people access to uh, dedicated containers when they log in, uh, which uh, will initially give you standard images, but also um, we're we're uh, holding out the possibility of giving the users the ability to to customize their images in in uh, in, in in a few different ways, not you know uh, completely uh, sort of a wild west approach, but we hope to give users the ability to customize their images. And then we're going to give, uh, as I mentioned, we have this uh, really uh, robust and resilient uh, management infrastructure where we'll give users the ability to run these long running services that can be managed using the, the Kubernetes framework that allows for resilience and other services. Uh, and then uh, from a user access perspective, once you do get on the system, we're hoping to open up a much, much richer way of interacting with uh, things on the, the services on the system, including things like RESTful interfaces to our workload manager, uh, the ability to run um, uh, you know, get lab runners that will help with the CICD folks, as well as other data movement operations. <clears throat> but let me just stop there.